energy control procedures. Let us now visually examine the procedure for controlling hazardous energy in the workplace before servicing or maintenancing operations begin. The energy control procedure can be broadly divided into five steps. First, identify the machinery or equipment that requires maintenance or service and the type and magnitude of energy that powers the equipment. After the energy sources are identified, next, identify the energy isolating device that will effectively block or isolate the equipment from the energy source. The machine or equipment should be turned off or shut down using the procedures established for the machine or equipment. Once the equipment is shut down, the energy isolating device should be engaged to physically separate the equipment from the energy source. After the equipment has been shut down and de-energized, an energy isolating device should be secured in place using a lockout device, a tagout device, or both. Following the application of lockout or tagout devices to energy isolating devices, all potentially hazardous stored or residual energy should be relieved, disconnected, restrained, and otherwise rendered safe. Finally, before any work begins, an authorized employee must verify that isolation and de-energization of the machine or equipment have been accomplished. Testing the equipment will also ensure that any capacitors have been discharged, hazardous heat has been dissipated, and potentially dangerous pressure has been relieved. Once the servicing and maintenance operations are completed and before the lockout tagout devices are removed, the authorized employee must take the following actions in accordance with specific procedures. Inspect the machine or equipment to ensure it is operationally intact. Inspect the work area to ensure that all non-essential items have been removed. Check all personnel have been safely positioned or removed from the area. Verify power controls are off or in a neutral position. Remove the lockout or tagout device and re-energize the equipment. After the lockout or tagout devices have been removed and before a machine or equipment is started, affected employees should be notified of the removal of the lockout or tagout device. Each lockout or tagout device should be removed from each energy isolating device by the employee who applied the device. In the rare event that the employee who applied the lockout or tagout device is not available to remove it, another person may remove it under the direction of the employer. However, this can only be done while adhering to the specific procedures outlined for the removal of lockout or tagout devices in the OSHA standard for the control of hazardous energy, 29 CFR 1910.147E3.